What is up, world? This is part two of the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021. Welcome back, and let's get right into it. Here we go. Ladies and gents, I welcome you back to part two of the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021. I'm Joe McGovern, and this is JM CAD Design, and we're going to jump right into it here. So as you see on my screen, this is exactly where we left off. I told you guys how you could open and save files. We talked about all the create tools and the modify tools. Anything that you draw, you can modify like move or make a copy of or stretch or rotate. And all you really have to do is just click whatever tool it is that you wanna do. It'll tell you down at the bottom, select objects. You pick the object that you wanna rotate or whatever tool you're in. And then obviously you can select multiple things. You would hit enter when you're done selecting and then it'll say specify the base point. So if I wanted to spin this like it was gonna rotate, I would click the center of where I want it to spin and it will spin around that point. I could click randomly where I wanna rotate something or I could type in a degree like 30 and hit enter and it will rotate at 30 degrees. The way the degrees in this software works, imagine a circle and anything to the right is gonna be zero degrees, anything up is gonna be 90, anything to the left is 180, anything down is 270, and then back to 360. So it works in a counterclockwise motion. So I wanna introduce something called dynamic input. Okay, dynamic input is F12 on the keyboard. As you're drawing, if you see boxes floating around your cursor, that means that dynamic input is turned on. Dynamic input allows you to click anywhere on the screen, and then without moving your cursor in any direction, it doesn't matter, you can type the distance that you wanna go, then hit tab and type the angle that you want to draw it at. So if I wanted to draw a 10 inch line going straight up, I would then type 90 and I would hit enter. I can then hit escape off of that tool and I drew my 10 inch line going straight up. With dynamic input turned off, that's how we had it in the first video, anything that you draw is going to revert down to the command line. So if I'm here, yes, I can go on the green line and type five enter, but you'll notice that the five drops down to the command line. So it's really a preference of the way that you like it better. Would you like to type your numbers down in the command line or would you like to type them uh, in boxes that are floating around your cursor? Moving on to the annotation box on the top ribbon, you can see that we do have a text tool up here. We have a multi-line text and a single line text. There's a multi-line text for paragraph text and there's a single line tool for just typing one or two or three different words inside of a text line. So with multi-line text, what I can do is I can click the top left corner and the bottom right corner of the paragraph that I want to draw. Up top, I can change the font. I can change what color it's being drawn in or what layer it's on. I can change the justification, line spacing, bullets, anything that you can imagine that you would see in a regular text document, you can draw in a multi-line text. The text height is over here. Right now it's set to uh, 0.20 inches. In this instance, if this line equaled 10 inches and I wanted my text to be maybe half that size, I'm going to want to make this number bigger, otherwise I'm not going to be able to see it. Now sometimes the text does look large when you're first drawing it, but when you finally click out and hit escape, you'll be out of that tool and you'll notice that since that text was so large, it actually moved off screen. So I'm going to do something called a zoom extends here, which is going to bring everything back to the center of my screen. The Zoom Extends tool can be found over here on the right side. You can just click on that magnifying glass, or you can do a double click of the scroller on the mouse, which is a little faster. I can click on this text and then double click inside of it to change my text. I can hit Escape to get back out of it. I can click the text and use this arrow here to bring my box wider if I'd like to get it all on the same line, or this arrow would make it deeper if I wanted to type more text. Once again, by clicking on the text and hitting delete, I can delete it off the screen, and I'll do that with the rest of my stuff on the screen as well. This is a good time to mention the selection boxes. You don't have to single click on everything that you wanna modify or erase. You can actually just click and drag to the left or drag to the right to get two different selection boxes. The green selection box is gonna select everything that is inside of it and touching the outside perimeter. The blue box is gonna only select things that are fully inside the blue box. So by drawing a box like this, I would get that line in there with the blue box. And by drawing a box like this that's barely touching, I would also get that because it's touching the outside perimeter. I would not get that line by drawing like this because the line is not fully inside the blue box. Keep in mind that you're not in any single tool right now. When, you're, when you hit escape and you're out of all tools, that's when you can do these green and blue selection boxes. So right now I'll do a green selection box over top of everything I have and then hit delete on the keyboard. Now let's go back to the other text tool, single line text. 
I can click this down anywhere where I wanna start the text, or I could even type a coordinate like zero comma zero. You'll see that that jumps down to where the red and green X and Y line meet. I can once again pan the screen across by holding down the scroller on my mouse and moving my mouse. With single line text, it actually reverts to the command line when it asks you what the height is that you wanna draw. In this case, we would do five and hit enter. It's gonna ask you the rotation angle of the text. At this point, whatever rotation angle you type is the way that the text is gonna go. As an example, you don't have to do zero and have the text be read left to right. You can put 90 in here and type your text. Then when you're done, you'd click off of that box and hit escape and the text will go up 90 degrees. A common mistake is to click down where you want the text, type your height, type your angle, and then type your text. But then at this point, you would think that it's done and you would hit escape you have to click off of it first, which will also start another text box, but you don't have to draw another text. You just have to click off and hit escape, and then you'll see those text boxes flip to the direction of the angle that you typed. We talked about using the dimensioning tool. If I had a rectangle on the screen that I put from this point, and I made it 10 wide, and I hit tab, and I made it five tall, and hit enter, I can use that dimensioning tool to object snap to the left side and the right side of this box, I can bring that line up and click down where I would like that number to be placed. And I can measure on the right side as well, from the right top to the right bottom and bring my line out and click. So you can reassure yourself that this is a 10 by five box. There are other dimensioning tools that are important to note in this software. By dropping down the arrow next to linear, you'll see some of the other ones like aligned, angular, arc length, radius, diameter. Depending on what dimension you're looking for is the one that you would click on. So if I had a circle, and I wanted to know what the diameter of that circle was, all I would do is click on the circle and then click down where I want my text. And the diameter of that circle is 3.9231. You might be asking, what is the difference between dimension and linear dimension? Dimension is your simple A to B point dimension. If I were to click on this object from this point to this point, it's gonna tell me what the distance is between those two points. But if I wanted to know the horizontal dimension of this object, I would click linear and click the same two points and it will stay either horizontal across or vertical across, depending on where you put your cursor. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video is how to change the colors of your lines, how to change the thickness of your lines, and how to change the line types. If I wanted this box to be a different color, I would select the box, I'd go up to the color wheel up here, and change to any color that I'd like. By clicking on that same box and going to the second one down here, I can change the line weight to be as thick as I would like, one millimeter. You'll see that on the screen there was no change and that's because as a default in the software, the line weight toggle is not turned on. So if you go down to the bottom right corner of your screen, you're gonna see some toggles down there, which are basically like your F12 being your dynamic input on and off. Those are just the hotkeys for that, but you'll see all the toggles down in the bottom right corner. By clicking on show hide line weight, I'll start seeing those line weights. Anything that's blue down here means that it's on, anything that's gray means that it's off. I would suggest hovering over with your cursor on some of these boxes to understand what the different ones are if you'd like to click them rather than typing the hotkeys. Some of them will show you the hotkey of what you can type to get it to turn on and off. For instance, display the drawing grid. Rather than typing grid and hitting enter and then clicking off, you can either click this toggle or you can hit F7. F7 also turns it back on. Line types. If I were to click on this object and I wanna change what the line type looks like, You'll notice that there are no other line types in here yet, but if I go to other and I hit load, I can load different line types of what I'm looking for. Common line types are hidden lines and center lines. So if I go to a center line and I click OK and I hit OK again, you'll notice that if I were to go back and click on this box, I can now change that to be a center line and you'll see that your line has changed its type. Here's a bonus tip for you. Obviously you're gonna make mistakes as you're going along. So rather than going up to the arrows and hitting the back arrow to undo, you can do control Z on the keyboard and that will also undo the last things that you've done. If you go too far, you could go back up to the front arrow and click on that arrow, or you can type redo. That's it for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching. And listen, if you like the video, if you're following along and enjoying this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click that bell if you wanna see future videos. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot.